Do you want to keep your fruits and vegetables green and fresh for longer in your kitchen? Well, today on WTF, we're going to show you how to keep everything from potatoes to apples from oxidizing and show you a great laki recipe, guacamole, and hummus. Hello and welcome to WTF, where we transform food here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen. I'm Chef Scott Guerin. And I'm Janie Wang, one of the owners of Modernist Pantry. And here on WTF, every week we cover unique ingredients and techniques and showcase some really fun recipes to help you get started in your own kitchen. And this week, we're going to be talking about how to keep things fresh and green. So you've gone to the grocery store, you got a whole bunch of produce and fruits, uh, but you want to make sure that those fruits and vegetables don't go brown before you have a chance to use them up. So today, Scott's going to tell you about two unique ingredients that will help you do that, as well as always, of course, extremely delicious recipes to try. Now, Scott, why don't we start with what are the two ingredients that, uh, that we're talking about today? So we're talking about sodium bisulfite and ascorbic acid. And they're different ingredients, but they do basically the same thing. It's mm -hmm. going to prevent certain vegetables and fruits from turning brown. And why do vegetables and fruits really turn brown? As we know, you know, if you cut an apple and you let it sit out, it's going to turn brown or mm -hmm. avocado, things like that. So what's really happening there? is as you cut into it, you're breaking down those cell walls. When you break down those cell walls, it releases two different things. There's phenols and phenolase. And phenolase, similar to uh, amylase, which we talked on a uh, future, or <laughs> on a past episode. <laughs> uh, so uh, ASE at the end means that it usually consumes whatever it is. So uh, phenolase will consume the, the phenols, and when it does that, it turns them to melanin, which is that brown color that we see in so many different fruits and vegetables. And what we want to do is prevent that. So something like a sodium bisulfite is going to prevent that because sodium bisulfite will completely wipe out that, um, that phenolase. And ascorbic acid is an antioxidant that will help prevent that from happening. So it will it'll kind of deter the, the phenolase. So both of these do the same thing and prevent that browning of fruit. Yeah. And I think for, um, for home cooks like myself who have tried to do this at home, usually we turn to something like a lemon juice in order to do that. Well, what is the difference between using a lemon juice versus using these ingredients? And I guess what are the benefits of, of getting them? So the reason why we would use lemon juice is that it's an acid. And mm -hmm. acid will lower the pH, and at a lower pH, there's less of, a, uh, uh, less of the ability for that uh, phenolase to you know, create the melanin. But when you're adding lemon juice, you're also adding lemon flavor. Mm -hmm. So if you want to just have something that's, you know, relatively clean label, go with the ascorbic acid and it won't add any of that, you know, tartness from the, the lemon. It's just that the uh, ascorbic acid will add the acidity enough to kind of prevent the, uh, the browning. Yeah. And I think that brings me to a good point about taste, right? Because we often use sodium bisulfite here in the kitchen. Um, but a common question that we do get when people hear a word like sodium bisulfite is, is it going to give whatever I'm using it in a chemically taste? No. So mm -hmm. uh, everything has a chemical name, and that's just what sodium bisulfite is. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's the chemical name, uh, but it's not going to change the flavor. And you use in such a small amount. It's 0.1% of the okay. total weight. So it's such an extremely small amount. And you want to keep it at that small amount. You don't ever want to add too much just because it could, could cause a reaction. But you want to make sure that it's used in such mm -hmm. a small amount, and you don't need any more than that. Right. You can keep things fresh and green and uh, ready to use for days, if not weeks. Yeah, and I know that you have some examples prepared for us to just kind of see um, the effectiveness uh, the effectiveness <laughs> of sodium bisulfite. Uh, what are we looking at? So we do have uh, quite a few different things. We kind of wanted to get, you know, run the gamut of all the things that turn brown. So okay. we, we, uh, we commonly use this with our guacamole. We'll just talk quick about the guacamole. You know, we've seen it in a number of different episodes, you know, our game time treats episodes. We always kind of break it out because it's, it's really amazing. Mm -hmm. You can leave this out on the counter. I've left it out on the counter overnight just to test it, stress test it, and it still stays green. But we wanted to try different things because we wanted to show you how well it really works. Mm -hmm. So one thing we can get into a recipe right here is our potato laki. So potatoes, we know you cut them, you're on the clock, it's going to turn that kind of yep. orangey, almost rusty looking color. Mm -hmm. So we added some sodium bisulfite and I made this two days ago and you can still see the beautiful color. Inside this we also added a uh, celery root or celeriac mm -hmm. and that also oxidizes, it also right. turns brown. So we still have this beautiful color that's going to allow us to, you know, 
the inside is not going to be uh, an off, you know, orange or anything. We're going to have that beautiful bright white color. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to add a little bit of oil to my hot pan. Let's move this around. And a really great thing about this is we actually used egg powder. So we wanted to add egg powder so that we're not getting any extra moisture. Because okay. sometimes uh, lockies can be very wet. Mm -hmm. And we use egg powder, so the only moisture that's within this recipe is from the potatoes itself. Mm -hmm. So if you were to do that without sodium bisulfite, you're going to end up with a very orange looking right. uh, laki. So yeah. I'm gonna take this, and this is great because you can prepare it a few days ahead of time, which generally you have to make them uh, you know, a la minute. So I'm just gonna add some right to the middle of my pan. And we did use the whole egg powder in this. Lower that down just a bit. Let that brown up. So other things that we did, very simple, as that cooks, we did artichokes. And you can see right here, this one was held in uh, lemon water, <coughs> and this one was in a sodium bisulfite solution. Okay. And these were done three days ago, and you could just see the, the complete difference. This had lemon water, but it still turned that orange, mm -hmm. that kind of rusty kind yep. of brown. Right? And we don't want that. We want something like a artichoke to be this beautiful green and yellow color. And this was also held in a sodium bisulfite mixture. So if you are to peel your artichoke hearts, put them in lemon water, yes, they will you know, hold on for a little bit, but eventually that protease, or I'm sorry, that phenolase is going to overcome and it's going to you know, create that yeah. brown. This one looks like you literally just cut yeah, it. Yeah, this is the exact same artichoke. I, this is one artichoke sliced in half put in two different solutions. So uh, a really good test just so people can see. So mm -hmm. as this cooks, uh, we did something with the artichokes where we made our uh, artichoke hearts, we shaved them. Generally, you're not able to make an artichoke heart salad mm -hmm. without having that browning, but we were able to. And then we also did uh, sunchokes or Jerusalem artichokes. These also oxidize. So we wanted to run you know, everything we possibly could as a test here. So we wanted okay. to make a salad. We have a nice uh, mustard and walnut vinaigrette here that we're going to put on. And we're going to add it to our hummus. Ooh. So the hummus recipe that we have on that the blog great. uses amylase. And the reason why we use amylase with the hummus is that it's going to break down those starchy kind of fibers. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be very smooth and uh, delicate when you eat it. Yep. So I'm just going to mix this up. So we have a raw sunchoke and artichoke salad. All right, I'm just going to add this to the top of our, our hummus. That looks great. Hmm. And then adding just a little bit of scallions over the top. Whereas usually these artichokes are going to have to be cooked, and when you cook them, they're going to become very soft. This gives you a nice kind of crispy crunch, mm -hmm. and you're also going to get you know, that freshness uh, that we're, we're looking for when we have hummus. Generally, everything that goes on hummus has to be cooked or it's you know, spicy, but this adds a nice bright freshness to the top of it. Yeah. So, Janie, if you wanted to try, you can try the hummus I'd with a little bit of the, the salad. And I'm yeah. going to come over here, and I'm just going to flip this laki because it's starting to get nice and golden brown around the edges. Yep, and if you do want the hummus recipe, all the links will be in the description below. So great. Mm. <coughs> all right, That's so as, super this, fresh and healthy. as this cooks on the opposite side, we did one more thing that we wanted to add to the laki. So usually there's like an applesauce, and we didn't want to just make you know pureed applesauce. You could do that, but we wanted to grate it. So we wanted to have a little bit more texture to our applesauce. So what we did is, yeah, we grated it, and then we made a really beautiful applesauce with some ascorbic acid. Mm -hmm. So the ascorbic acid in here is not going to change the flavor of those apples. Okay. You're not going to get that you know, uh, bright tartness from a lemon. You're going to get the sweetness of the apples, but you're also going to get it so where it is not turning brown. And these right. were done yesterday, so you can still see that they are holding on really beautifully. Okay. So as this is finishing up, I'm going to take this off. Place it right in the middle of my plate mm. here. Then we just have some double cream here. If you can't get double cream, uh, it's totally fine to use something like uh, sour cream on top. So I'm just gonna put a little, well, doesn't come out so well here. <laughs> That's the thing with double cream. If it's not warm enough, it's not gonna work. So we adapt. 
you know, that's, that's how life goes, isn't it? Yep. So it's going to melt directly into the Locky anyways. And then on top of that. I'm always a fan of more cream, so. Yes. I'm going to place my applesauce. And as the double cream melts, it'll start to, you know, seep in mm. to the, uh, to the Locky, and it is very delicious. And here, yeah. if you want to try that, Janie. Of course, of course I do. And kind of what I love about sodium bisulfa and why we use it a lot here in the kitchen um, and ascorbic acid is that, you know, like it just makes everything better, right? Yeah. Like it's, it's a purely functional ingredient and you're getting both superior presentation, you're getting value out of the money you already spent. So I, like, that's always a win. I'm gonna eat this. Yeah, and you don't want to have to waste anything. So mm -hmm. especially nowadays, right? We want to keep all mm -hmm. those apples fresh, those potatoes, uh, mm -hmm. uh, any produce that we purchase. So it, it's so simple. It's a one percent solution. If you want to soak something in it, it's an unbelievably small amount. So it's like one gram to a thousand grams yeah. of. Uh, That's point one. He said one, but he meant. Oh, excuse point me. One. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> point one percent. So yeah, it's it's such a small amount. It's one gram to a thousand grams mm -hmm. of water, uh, and if you were to do that, you know. It's way less than an ounce, way less than a quarter of an ounce to an entire quart of water. If you just want to soak something, you know, you're, you're cutting or peeling potatoes, you can take it, dip them, and then use them right away, and it's going to keep it nice and fresh. Yeah. So, um, as always, you know, if you want to see Scott making, what, what do we make on Instagram this week? We did the Lockies. The Locky. So, you can check us out at Modernist Pantry across our various platforms. Um, and as always, if you do try sodium bisulfite and or ascorbic acid, you try our recipes. You put them into your own favorite recipes, leave your comments, leave your questions below. We are always here to you know, help you out and make sure that you're successful. So looking forward to seeing you guys next week. And from here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen, I'm Janie Wang. And I'm Scott Guerin. Thank you so much for watching. And if you haven't already, like, comment, and subscribe. And hit that bell so you get notified when we drop a new video. To get today's recipes and all of our recipes, remember to go to blog.modernistpantry.com where you get recipes, ask a chef's tips and tricks, and more. And if you haven't already, tell a friend so they know what's going on here at WTF. And as always, to get any of the ingredients you saw today, you can go to modernistpantry.com to shop. And until next time, we'll be here in the test kitchen helping you create memorable and magical experiences. <laughs>